What's up guys, StatsGFX aka Look here, and today is an episode 9 of A Cure's Life. Today we have Jack Kyle with us, so let's get on with the video. Jack Kai is a cuber from Australia who started competing in 2014. He's attended 62 competitions over these years and has got a ton of amazing results. Jack's most known for his blind times, with being third in the world for single for three blinds and second in the world for average. He's also world class in four blind, five blind, and multi blinds as well. He's had three world records, 15 continental records, and one national record. As well as this, he won 3 blind, came 2nd in 5 blind, and 2nd in multi blind at the most recent uh, WCA Championships in 2019. Jack also has a YouTube which he puts up solves, as well as 3 blind tutorials, guides, and all tons of useful stuff. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's a link in the description below. So today we have Jack Kai on with us. Thanks for coming on. Hello, no worries. Yeah. So let's just kick into the first question. So what does kind of a typical week look like for you in terms of kind of work, school, life, and how are you just kind of keeping fit in with all that? Uh, I guess there's a bit of a random stuff. I guess there's, of course, the keeping related stuff. So a bit of keeping practice. Um, I've been doing too much recently, like one to one and a half hours maybe. Also recently started like a, I guess, coaching service for teaching people how to get faster at solving Rubik's Cube blindfolded. So that's been taking some time as well. I also do like violin because I'm studying a Bachelor of Music at university. So a bit of teaching violin as well, so a bit of a random mix of both. And I also revealed in my 10,000 subscriber special video recently that I was learning Japanese for learning Japanese quite a bit uh, recently as well. So a bit of a random mix of everything. It kind of depends on the day, I suppose. Yeah, so pretty busy schedule. Um, how, how do you... I guess when I put it that way, that's it. No, I was just going to say, pretty busy schedule. How do you manage to fit cubing into all that? I guess I just fit in like an hour to like an hour half of practice every day. Um, I have to admit, lately my motivation's kind of fallen off a bit. But yeah, for the most part, um, I focus on like free blind, of course. Um, I used to do a bit of big blind, but I haven't been motivated as much lately, admittedly. I try to get in like, you know, one, two, I guess, big multi blind and attempts every week as well. So I don't know. I feel like I might add a bit of been trying to add a bit of CFOP lately because I've kind of stagnated in the CFOP realm for like four so years so I don't know that's kind of piqued my interest a little bit lately as well but yeah. nice so you'd mentioned that you kind of try and do one or two big multi attempts do you try and do other kind of smaller multi attempts as well or is it kind of other techniques that you practice additional to that I think there was kind of a phase where I was trying to do a bunch of like small multi attempts like every day, but I think I burnt out of it. So I'm kind of taking this kind of focus on like maybe three blood and some of the, the shorter events um, most of the days and maybe have like two like big ones and to see where that takes me. So nice. So in relation to three blind then, is it specific kind of solve based practice you do or is it kind of drilling algs? Well, not algs, so to speak, but kind of three style cases, optimizing. Yeah, computers, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I start off by doing like, it's practice focused on like execution. And so I just, it's kind of like blind, um, blind method. So I just like memorize for like, you know, on time. Then I just kind of solve as fast as briefly as I can. Um, also just to make sure my hardware is like all good. But sometimes, I don't know why, and especially because Melbourne Railroad has been kind of lately and when I turn my heater on I don't know if you felt this before but sometimes when a temperature like suddenly changes my cube feels like funny and all that yeah. so you know I just try to you know test my cube to see if it's okay and then I also sometimes do like memory practice so I just try to go through the cube as fast as I can just stop the time to check what the memory is like I just kind of do like normal solves after that so something along the lines of that because I I know from personal experience and a lot of kind of newer three blinders um, they almost get into that mindset of just solve, solve, solve. So kind of what's your thoughts on other stuff additional to just solving in relation to kind of three blind improvement? I think most of my improvement kind of stem from solving, but I guess in terms of improving faster, like, I don't know, I guess it kind of just depends on the person, I suppose. Um, if, for example, for like maybe 
general intermediate solvers, maybe the focus might need to be on making sure they're using a proper method to keep track of pieces or making sure you have like, you know, words set up for certain like difficult letter pairs. Um, I guess around the advanced stage, maybe there could be some, I guess, merit behind like figuring out better algs for certain cases and whatnot as well. Um, I haven't done too much of it recently, but I might look into like revamping my alg list sometime soon. There'll be one or two videos linked in the description below if anyone wants more detail, because um, Jack's made See, a few <laughs> helpful videos. Um, we had Sanley on a few weeks ago speaking about kind of big blind and thoughts on kind of big blind improvement kind of long term, um, and we discussed kind of fully uh, full floating buffers in a big blind. I was just wondering what's your kind of opinion on that and. What's your kind of thoughts about big blind improvement as a whole? Yeah. Not too, I guess, good at big blinds. I don't feel too qualified to talk about it, but I guess about the whole like a full floating thing, like you know, I guess it's like faster if you can get used to it, and people have definitely shown that. But I don't know. I never really got around to doing that because like I feel like things like you know the simple things like luck and like just performing well under pressure have like such a how to put it, disproportionate like you know about importance and blind like i kind of feel like if i was given like you know some decent scrambles in competition and i could nail them all like even without any like advanced techniques i could get like maybe 16 mean traps but like i don't know like maybe nearly as many algs as some maybe the other top lines or something but like i don't know it's kind of hard to justify I mean, at least for me to justify loading or floating because it's such like such like such of sorry i can't english so it's kind of late for me um I don't know, it's just kind of hard to justify and yeah. Interesting. So what's your kind of thoughts about specifically three blind improvement as as time goes on? Do you think kind of memo is going to have to get shorter, TPS is going to have to get higher, or is there going to be kind of new techniques that maybe no one's inputted yet that people might input in the future? You know, I guess method wise, I know some people, as you might have heard, like, you know, be talking about stuff like five style. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't know, I don't I don't really see like that going at least anywhere from what I've seen because first of all there'd be like, you know, obviously a ridiculous amount of algs, but I feel like I've seen some of the algs and they don't seem like, you know, much faster, if not even faster at all compared to three cell algs. So at the moment I only really see potential just in three cell as a method. Um, I guess there was like a big like, you know, improvement in execution times like, around twenty seventeen onwards when um I just transitioned to like using you know, you know, E and S slices, which they didn't really do before, and more of a rotationless approach. But yeah, from here onwards, like, you know, I guess people definitely learned some more, like, you know, advanced tricks here and there, but, like, yeah, other than that, I'm really sure where we'll go from here, at least to get any kind of, you know, really major improvement. Although that might be hard to do execution wise, because we're already, like, you know, pretty fast already, like, average maybe like 11 seconds like execution so yeah. yeah it's hard to you know think about where we can go memo wise like maybe i could probably improve like a second or two more traps but yeah. it's exciting to see kind of those progression though um so yeah, people are getting like pretty oh. fast nowadays yeah yeah is i had seen um rose multi-blind and has kind of multi-blind improvement oh yeah improves so damn quickly yeah to be honest, you've had some pretty good multi-blind um, improvement recently as well, from what I've seen at least on Instagram. Um, get some decent small attempts, yeah, but to get motivation sort of been sort of a bit all over the place admittedly lately, but yeah, yeah got to get back into it, I suppose. So, kind of specifically based on kind of you, um, how, what's your kind of thoughts on of cubing as a whole, like what sort of impact do you think it's had on you? Um, um I guess it's just, yeah, I guess a pretty big one. It's given me, you know, something, you know, some kind of school that I've become like, you know, be decent at and, you know, it's definitely helped raise my you know, confidence, allowed me to meet a lot of people from around the world. Um, just being a pretty, this cool thing overall for me. And yeah, that's kind of, Um, I think that's all of my questions. I don't think I have any more. Um, big thanks to Jack for coming on. Um, you can find his thanks for me and those videos that I talked about earlier in the description below. Um, massive congrats! To the
congratulations again on the Rubik's sponsorship. Um, Thanks for that, yeah. But yeah, that's everything. Thanks again. See ya. Nice. See ya.